Hi everyone, this is video number 16 of the Regents Chemistry Curriculum and our topic of today is redox reactions. In this video, you're going to learn how to calculate the amount of electrons lost or gained by ions in a given reaction. Okay, so let's get started right away. Here are a bunch of questions. Uh, please read the following statements, determine whether they're true or false. Okay. Take your time, read carefully, uh, pause the video, and uh, now we're going to get started. All right. So redox reactions. What are redox reactions? Uh, redox stand for reduction and oxidation. Okay. So redox reactions, reduction and oxidation are, are interdependent meaning that oxidation cannot occur without reduction. All right. So if oxidation takes place, it is going to trigger reduction to also take place. Now, Eulip Rigger is an acronym I created. Many teachers will probably teach you Leo the Lion said Ger. Uh, People down in Texas, they say oil rig. Our friends, a couple of friends say that. Uh, I decided to say oil lip rigger, which doesn't really make sense, but it helps. It helps a lot of students. So oxidation is losing electrons at the product side. O oxidation is losing electrons at the product side while rigor reduction is gaining electrons at the reactant side. This is going to be very important for us when we're balancing redox reactions. When we're balancing an oxidation half reaction or a reduction half reaction, this is very important for us. Okay. All of these are examples of redox reactions. And we're going to know why right after we learn how to ox assign oxidation numbers. So if you have a lonely monatomic or a lonely diatomic element, the oxidation number of that element is zero. So here are some examples. Sodium zero, lonely by itself. Chlorine by itself, by itself, by itself. Zinc is by itself. Hydrogen is by itself. Their oxidation numbers are zeros. If a bonded element has only one charge on the periodic table, the oxidation number of that element will be that charge. So here's an example, sodium. It has a single charge on the periodic table. We look at the periodic table. Here it is we're seeing that sodium has a charge of plus one. Okay. What does that mean? It, it has only a single charge. Unlike titanium, for example, it has multiple charges. So sodium has a single charge. So the oxidation number of that sodium is going to be plus one when it's bonded. Okay. Now, since there are no subscripts here, there's no subscripts under NaCl, the oxidation number of chlorine must be negative one. Generally speaking, chlorine is usually usually has an oxidation number of negative one when it's bonded. All right. So before I move on and discuss all the others, I'm going to look at this synthesis reaction. What are we seeing here? We're seeing that sodium Oxidation number went from zero to plus one. So your sodium oxidation number went from zero to plus one. While chlorine oxidation number went from zero to negative one. So obviously this chlorine went down. The oxidation number was reduced. So therefore this is a reduction reaction 
and sodium was oxidized because it went up so therefore this is an oxidation reaction okay also in terms of electrons we can see that sodium became positive which means that it has fewer electrons so sodium as an atom is neutral meaning the number of protons equal the number of electrons so they all cancel out cancel out the positives cancel out the negatives but when sodium loses an electron it will have an overall positive charge so in this case the reason why sodium is plus one is because it lost a single electron and why it has a positive one a positive proton that cannot be cancelled out with the with an electron because the electron was lost okay here we have an extra additional negative charge which means we have an additional electron all right which means that we gained electrons we have a total of two sodiums here so maybe we should write that down in our reaction two sodiums and we have a total of two sodiums here as well two sodiums we see that each sodium has a plus one charge so we have a total of a plus two charge again the reason why is why we have a plus charge is because we lost electrons since we have two sodiums and each one loses an electron we're going to have to show that we lost those two electrons here so oxidation oilip oxidation is losing electrons at the product side so here are the two electrons that i added to the product side the product side is on the right side of the reaction on the other hand rigor reduction is gaining electrons at the reactant side we see that we have two chlorines and we have also two chlorines here so this two actually distributes two sodiums and two chlorines so let's put that two over here so since reduction is gaining electrons at the reactant side we see we see that each chlorine has a negative one charge which means each chlorine has an additional negative charge there's a total of two additional charges i'm going to add two electrons here reduction is gaining electrons at the reactant side okay now you have a fully balanced redox half reaction or uh, sorry reduction half reaction and a fully balanced oxidation half reaction okay if you have a bonded fluorine the oxidation number of that bonded fluorine is usually negative one for example an hf fluorine is negative one hydrogen is positive one bonded oxygens usually negative two so for example an h2o oxygen is negative two while hydrogen is positive one there's an exception when you have h2o2 oxygen would be negative one and hydrogen would be positive one in of2 also an exception here oxygen will actually be positive two while fluorine will be negative one there are two of them so the net for that fluorine is negative two but the oxidation number of a fluorine atom that's bonded with an oxygen is negative one uh, another rule for assigning oxidation numbers the sum of the oxidation numbers shall always equal to zero so hint why here 
for OF2. Oxygen was positive 2. Fluorine had to be negative 1. Negative 1 times 2, because there are two of them, gives me a net charge of negative 2 for fluorine and a charge of positive 2 for oxygen. Negative 2 and positive 2 cancel out and the charge of the entire compound will be zero. Okay. If the compound has an overall charge, then the sum will be uh, equal to that overall charge. So let's take, for example, PO3. Or P PO4. Phosphate, it has a charge of negative 3. That's a polyatomic ion. You'll see that on table E. So phosphate ion has a charge of negative 3, which means the sum of the oxidation numbers here must equal to negative 3. So phosphorus oxidation number plus the oxygen total oxidation numbers shall equal to negative 3. We know that a bonded oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2. So negative 2 times 4 gives you a total of negative 8. Phosphorus plus whatever the charge of the phosphorus is shall equal to that negative 3. So negative 8 plus what number gives me negative 3? The answer is positive 5. So phosphorus has an oxidation number of positive 5. Let's take another example here. C2O4 has, a has an overall charge of negative 2, so it's therefore the sum of the total charges must equal to negative 2. Oxygen, again, when it's bonded, it has a negative 2 charge. The total for the oxygens is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2 carbons shall equal to negative 8, and then negative 2. So, negative 8 plus 6 gives you negative 8 plus 6 gives you negative 2 but this 6 is for 2 carbons so what we're going to do to figure out the oxidation number of a single carbon we're going to take that 6 and divide it by 2 of them and then we're going to get the oxidation number of carbon to be plus 3 Okay, so this is how we assign oxidation numbers. Let's read a little more. This is pretty much another example. You can read on your own. Pause the video. We just went over this example. We already went over writing balanced oxidation reactions. Here's another example here. You can read over it to review. Remember when you're balancing redox reactions, remember OILIP to know where to put the pro uh, electrons. In this case, when you are oxidized, you put the electrons on the product side. And remember rigor. When you're reduced, you put the re electrons on the reactant side. Okay. And that's pretty much it for today. Let's go back to the questions. Here they are. Read the following statements to determine whether they're true or false. And that's it. Thank you for listening.